Hi, my name is Patrick Anderson. I'm a technology specialist with Microsoft Dynamics CRM team. And today I'm going to talk to you about uh, building dialogues uh, with CRM 2011. First, we'll talk about dialogues and what they are. I'll, I'll run one and show you how it works. And then I'll show you how to build it and some of the, um, some of the, the gotchas that you may run into. So first off, uh, dialogues are part of an overall um, um, object or entity uh, called uh, called processes and processes include workflows as well as dialogues and workflows are typically an automated um, process that runs a, a series of events um, without any user interaction um, typically now whereas a dialogue would typically have some user interaction so you would you would present someone with forms uh, with questions that they um, can use to, to ask as a template uh, potentially like a call script where they're gathering data and then that data can be used in a useful way um, to populate a record or a form etc now let's run one and, and show you what it looks like so I'm gonna grab a, a lead record here this is a new customer lead and they have uh, just some basic information filled out here uh, what I am hoping the customer service representative to do is to further qualify this before we send it on to a sales person we'll go ahead and launch this dialog and I've called it qualify for budget and it, as you can see here it, it um, presents a form for us here and you know this first one is to ask what the primary reason for this customer uh, that they're, they're looking to purchase and I'm dynamically adding the customer name here uh, and then we have an area where I can have uh, a tip so this is for the person asking the question there's also a comments field down here so I could I could add in some free form uh, comments uh, that may be useful but um, I'll just put in some some data here so we can move on so that was an open text field by the way um, I've put a few different examples in here to show you how that works and when we get into building it um, pay attention to that because they're a little bit different in how we we handle them and, and populate the data back to the form um, this is a drop-down box, so purchase time frame. I'll say within, um, oops, within 20, uh, 30 days. And uh, last thing I want to capture is who's the decision maker. And is there budget allocated for this? So this is a, a radio button. Um, so a couple varieties there of, of field types and as, as we get into building that I'll show you how why that's useful so we'll pull up the record here you see it populated some of this this data now reason for purchase purchase time frame I could I could manually override that uh, and a decision maker um, so let's take a look at that dialogue and how it's actually built it's the qualify budget dialog here and I just want to point out some of the the gotchas uh, in case you run into these to make this a little bit easier so I've deactivated this um, this dialog and uh, the primary things that are different with the dialog uh, rather than workflow are the concept of page and prompt and response um, so those two those two pieces are kind of unique to dialogues because we present a page and we prompt and respond um, on that. So page. let's start out here and we go through this and um, we start out with a, the a page and we're going to capture the reason for purchase. Um, we have a prompt and response dialog here and if I look at the properties of that, we see here's my prompt text the question um, company name is populated um, by this variable so um, I, I basically found that by looking at the lead record 
and then choosing the attribute of company name. So there's my prompt text, here's my tip text. This is again just help for the end user. Uh, and then the choice of response type, in this case it was a text. Um, so it's very straightforward. And that's basically it. Now here's another one um, where we used uh, a drop down pick list. And um, if we look to set properties on that, it's a little bit more complex because we have the pick list variables. So we simply add those and then we give them a value and a label. That's essentially it. Pretty common there. Um, and this is probably one that, that kind of got me the first time, and that is um, uh, the time frame and basically how to update that. So, because um, we're updating that to a form where we also have a drop down of all these values. So, um, you know, we, we need to step through this carefully um, and choose how we want that set. So we look at um, what the value is equal to. And if it's, uh, you know, zero is ASAP, less than 30 days, the value was one. Um, so we step through kind of an if then, otherwise it moves on. And what we're doing in each of these is basically setting the purchase time frame um, from that variable of the specific attribute. So um, if it's zero, and that was ASAP as soon as possible, um, then I look for um, basically that value uh, in the dropdown of the lead record um, and assign that specifically. So, and that gives you some nice flexibility because it gives me a drop down in the question and it also gives you a drop down on the end user record form um, where they're uh, asking the question. So let me go back to that. So even though, so we'll, we'll fill this out initially, but it allows me to go back here and manually change this. Um, so it, it makes it nice and flexible. But in doing that, you have to be careful with how you're building your dialogue. So um, at, you step through, you look for what the initial piece was set to, and then set it specifically based on the attributes of the screen there. So that was probably one of the trickier ones. Um, and then lastly, we had uh, the decision maker that was a text field. That was pretty straightforward. Um, then the radio buttons here. And um, again, we use the same if then loop. This was a yes no, so it was pretty simple. If, if um, it wasn't uh, um, zero, then it was the other it was the other option, which is yes. So that was simple. And if we look at the set properties on that one, Um, we do not have that on the form. Or yes, we do. It's right here. So the budgeted project is yes, and we simply put the value in there. The default value it was selected as yes, and that populates it there. So hopefully this was helpful on uh, the overview of dialogues, how they work, and how they're built.